Hello, this is Mark with Bailey Software. In this tutorial, we will set up a new account by manually entering transactions. To get started, we'll open up the Portfolio Editor window by going to View, Portfolio Editor. When you set up a new account, you're going to want to create a new subportfolio for it. To create a new subportfolio, right mouse click on an existing subportfolio and choose New Subportfolio. We'll just give it a name. And we'll leave the rest of these at their default values for now. Once you have a sub-portfolio for your account created, um, you create investments within that sub-portfolio. You'll typically create an investment for every holding plus one for your cash. So we'll right mouse click on this existing sub-portfolio and choose New Investment, which opens up the New Investment dialog box and just enter in the information for your investment. So first we'll create one for our cash. You can enter the name, symbol, you choose where this new investment is going to go and we're going to put it in the My Brokerage Account subportfolio. From within here you can assign the investment type, asset type, investment goal or sector. For now we'll just leave these um, at their defaults and we will set it to cash. We're going to start our cash off with $20,000. When you're tracking cash you always keep the price at 1 and the shares are equal to the value so we'll enter 20,000 shares and we'll say this was as of the beginning of this year and just say OK and then you assign um, a file name to your investment and just click save. And we're going to assign this cash investment to be our default cash account so that any buys or sells or dividends in this account automatically go into or come out of this cash investment. To do that you go back to the properties of this sub portfolio and under default cash account we're going to choose cash and just say OK. For the next step, we're going to create another investment. We're going to create Intel. So again, go back to the new investment dialog box. And we're going to ignore the categories for now. And we're again going to put this into my brokerage account. And we'll record some opening data where we first bought Intel. Enter a price that you paid for these shares and the number of shares that you purchased and any commission fee that you may have paid. And just say OK. And again, save this investment. To add additional transactions, we're going to use the data register. To get to the data register, you can click on this icon on the toolbar. You can say Edit All Data or you can double click on a particular investment that you want to modify. So I double clicked on Intel and that opened up Intel in the data register. And we do have a separate tutorial that goes into using the data register in more detail. But for now you just make sure that you select the account that you want to work with and the investment that you want to work with and we'll leave it set to all transactions for the data type. And you can see here's the initial opening data transaction that we've already entered. And we're going to enter a dividend. So we'll say click on the new button and say new distribution and record that on August 3rd we received a $60 dividend. And just say OK. And you can see that it added it here. And you basically repeat this for every transaction that you want to manually enter. Um, so if we want to record a sell, for example, you click on the New button and say New Buy or Sell. And we say we record a sell and just enter the date. And we'll say we sold 100 shares at 48.25. 
and these three boxes here have to be self consistent with each other so if you enter data in any two of them you can just click into the third and fund manager will fill in the appropriate information and again enter optionally enter any commission that you may have paid if you want to record a memo you can do that and just say OK and that's how you manually record transactions and we can go check the cash investment and look at the transactions in there and you can see here's our initial twenty thousand dollar purchase and fund manager automatically recorded all three of these for us when we recorded transactions in Intel so when we, when we bought our initial shares of Intel it took the money out of cash when we had a dividend it deposited that money when we sold Intel it deposited that money next we're going to take a look at retrieving pricing information for our account so if we look at Intel you can see the transactions here but if we switch over to closing prices you can see we only have two closing prices that were recorded when we had a buy and sell transaction we're gonna retrieve historical prices for our account from the internet to check the quote servers that you're using go under options internet settings and you can see that for current prices we're going to Yahoo and for historical prices we're going to Yahoo historical those are good defaults so we'll just leave them set like that to retrieve historical prices you click on this HST button or go to edit internet retrieve historical prices and it comes up and asks you for what date range for the sake of this tutorial we'll just go back to the beginning of the year okay well, let's go double check that the prices were retrieved so we'll double click on Intel and go to the prices data type and you can see that it filled in all the historical prices back to the beginning of the year next we're gonna get current prices to get current prices just click on this PRC button or say edit internet retrieve prices so we'll use the PRC button this time and it went out and got a current quote for all of our investments by default cash is set not to retrieve price as it always stays fixed at a price of one now that we've created an account and set up a couple investments and recorded some transactions we're gonna save our work as you saw earlier every investment is saved to its own investment file to save your investments say file save all investments in addition to investment files there's also a portfolio file which remembers your whole workspace which includes all your sub portfolios which investments belong in every sub portfolio etc to save your portfolio just say file save portfolio and the first time you have to use save portfolio as and assign some name to your portfolio file in the future whenever you exit fund manager it will automatically save all your data or if you want to force a save at any time just go back to file save all investments and file save portfolio when you exit fund manager and restart it your last opened portfolio file will automatically be reopened so that your data comes back just the way you left it the last time okay thanks for watching this getting started tutorial